Hello there! First of all, I want to mention that this video idea is not mine. I saw this topic first at Art a la carte's channel and while watching her video, uh, which I can really recommend, a lot of memories came up from when I started using Copic markers more often. I thought it could be fun to share my thoughts of this topic with you, um, because maybe it's helpful for you to know what I would have changed if I could turn back time. And I would really recommend to watch Art a la carte's video as well. You can find a link to her channel in the description box down below. Well, I used Copic markers for about 8 or 9 years now. And it's a long time. So, of course, there are a lot of things I didn't knew about alcohol-based markers in general when I started using them. I can still remember when I was young, I always thought to myself that I never wanted to use Copic markers because it's so mainstream. That's what I thought to myself. <laughs> Silly me. I was so into using colored pencils, but someday my mother bought me um, about four of the classic Copic markers, so the ones in the square shape. And I can still remember what colors I got for my mom. It was a blue, a pink and a grayish pale green and a brown marker. These were the markers I started with. I think it's obvious that I wasn't good at using them. Of course, this combination of colors is not the best choice to start. And of course, it's also good to have um, some more different colors to start with. Um, like something within one color group. And the more you practice, the better you will understand this medium and how it works. And I have learned a lot of different things which I want to share with you. First thing, and which is the most important one when using Copic markers, using the right paper. Copy paper is not Copic paper. Finding a suitable marker paper is not really that complicated. Of course, it tends to be a lot more expensive than using copy paper, but copy paper is not for making good art. I always tended to use thick paper instead of marker paper and I still do prefer thick ones over marker paper. But I used to take thick paper that sucked all the ink so you can't even do a proper blending. It was more such a paper that um, was only for sketching and not for using markers. Today I'm using Kansan Bristol paper and sometimes I use marker paper from Winsor & Newton, uh, which I can really recommend. Using suitable pigment liners is the next important thing I wish I had back then. I had no idea what to use. I didn't really like the Copic Multi liners because of their high price and uh, being not eraser proof and low on ink so you need to buy them after drawing only a few pictures and i still don't really like them so when i was younger i only used fine liners from faber castell and other cheap fine liners from a dollar store to draw but these pens are mostly water-based and not suitable with alcohol-based markers. So in my case, they always smeared or they bleeded and ruined anything at the end. Now I really like to use the Deleter Black Ink, which is Copic proof and a lot cheaper over time. And there are still some other pretty good alternatives to Copic Multiliners. Copic markers are expensive. An important lesson I have learned is to buy refills. These Copic refills are called Various Ink. They look so expensive at first, but you can fill up your markers up until 17 times. It's a small investment, but it's a lot cheaper over time than always buying new markers and throwing the old ones away. You can save a lot of money at the end. And talking about refills, here's another thing I had to learn. Always use the right refill instead of killing your marker with a different color to refill, even if you think it's a quite similar color, because it's not. <laughs> Unless 
you really want to mix your own colors. However, it's almost impossible to get the wrong color out of your marker, even if you start filling the right color. If your marker is almost empty and you don't have any refills at home, you can add a bit of the colorless blender or a bit of rubbing alcohol to activate the remaining pigments. But be careful, the color will fade of course. Like I mentioned before, my first Copic markers were the classic markers with a fine and a chisel nib, so no brush nib. But for me, these chisel nibs are not that hard to handle, but it's a far different feeling to color with a brush nib like from Copic Chow and Sketch. With a brush nib, it's easier to create a proper blending and softer edges because the brush nib is super soft and flexible, while a chisel nib is pretty hard and bold. It's awesome to fill some areas with color or to make some rough sketches with a chisel nib. But now I personally would have bought my younger self a Copic Chow set instead of a classic marker set. And then I would save the rest of the money for buying various ink. Use another piece of paper to test colors first and possible color combination um, before using them in your art. In most cases, the caps of your markers are misleading. Sometimes it looks like a soft pink color and then at the end, the ink is a grayish pink tone. Things that happen to me. <laughs> Everybody has his own style and way to learn to draw with Copic markers. There's no right or wrong in using them. There are a lot of different techniques and ways to use Copic markers. I personally think the most important thing is to find things you like to draw with and that are suitable with your Copic markers if this is what you want. You should feel free to do your own experience and just try out a lot of different things. So now it's your turn. What do you wish to knew when you started using Copic markers and do you have any other tips for using them? It would be interesting to know your opinion and it could be pretty helpful for other people if you write your experience in the comment section down below. Since we all have different coloring techniques and are always practicing to get better, maybe you like to take a peek at my Copic tutorials on my channel. You can also suggest a topic for future tutorials, which you would like to see me doing on my channel. So that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and like always, stay creative. Bye bye!